Jamie um, is a older college student, as he likes to put it, and he's often been mistaken for either the professor or the professor's assistant. Evan's fun fact, and I'm going to have to follow up on this. I keep saying this. Evan met his future wife while actually working uh, in the early days of the Florida Health Information Exchange and who he later technically, I don't understand that, married at a Guns N' Roses concert. So remember, as we hear from these two great resources, submit your questions as placeholders for discussions. And Jamie, I'm going to let you take it away. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Kim. Thank you for that intro. I appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us today. Uh, we really appreciate it, especially during these unprecedented times. Um, as, as Kim mentioned, it is hard to believe that we're only a few months away from our 10-year anniversary of the Florida HIE Project's inception. Uh, it's been my great fortune to have been part of this since the beginning. Uh, I've, I've served in different capacities. Uh, from the very beginning, when I started working at the Institute of Healthcare Administration, I think I spent the first two months just uh, reading the High Tech Act, uh, combing through over 800 pages of the CMS final rule. Uh, just when I thought that I had a good understanding, uh, a new rule was, was released. So I learned quickly that updates and changes would be routine in, in our projects. Uh, so I would say with that, the journey has felt more like a roller coaster, more so than a nice roll through the park. But that roller coaster comparison feels a lot more relatable this year than in years past. And, and I could say that we've had great partnerships to share that ride with. Um, I'm honored to currently serve as a project director for the Medicaid Promoting Interoperability Program and the Florida Health Information Exchange Services Programs on behalf of the agency. As you guys all know, the agency oversees the governance of the Florida Health Information Exchange alongside our partner, Audacious Inquiry, who provides the technical and daily operations with input from you all, our stakeholders. We've learned a great deal over these past nine years of administering this program, uh, but this year specifically where we've all had a rise to the challenge Throughout this year, we've been challenged in many ways. And through some of those challenges, we found some achievements. Uh, whether it was something small like helping a first grader pass a uh, virtual learning math class or uh, finding a suit that still fits, barely. Uh, but joking aside, I, I would say that our, our most notable achievement for us this year has been the ability to take advantage of our knowledge uh, and those relationships we foster to help make the Florida HIE program more diverse, more flexible, and innovative. Um, this year, we focused a lot of our effort onto um, the encounter notification service expansion opportunities, educating and supporting query exchange through connection to the national networks, partnering with the Florida Department of Health to improve public health, and supporting emergency preparedness and response. Uh, looking into the ENS expansion opportunities, We've been able to work um, to include additional provider organizations as data sources, which has really helped increase the amount of actionable data made available to ambulatory providers, health systems, accountable care organizations, payers, and other subscribers. And amazingly enough, even with the pandemic, uh, we've been able to, to really move forward on that goal. Since last user summit, our ENS uh, service has gone from 224 data source facilities, mostly made up of acute care hospitals, uh, to now over 400 data source facilities that are made up of acute care hospitals and post-acute care providers, such as uh, rehab hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, hospice, um, home health, and county health departments. We're also working on uh, making concerted efforts to increase the receipt of encounter notifications by primary care providers through enhanced outreach efforts, coordination with health plans, um, and the accountable care organizations, as well as through collaboration with our associations. We continue to work diligently to increase the number of behavioral health providers participating in ESS as both data sources and subscribers of ENS, of ENS uh, to better support transitions of care in this area. We are educating and supporting query exchange connections to the national networks. Uh, this is being done directly through regional exchanges or the state gateway. Uh, Florida has over 6,000 providers and organizations currently that are connected or connecting uh, to exchange more comprehensive clinical records across those national networks. Uh, you guys have probably heard of some of these, uh, the eHealth Exchange, Care Quality, and Commonwealth. And uh, they ultimately, what they do is allow for more flexibility in the decision-making for healthcare. The agency also knows and recognizes that regional HIEs are an important part of the HIE landscape here in Florida. And we are very happy to work with and continue supporting their efforts to increase exchange throughout the state. 
We say Gateway to eHealth Exchange offers us an interim solution uh, for large organizations and health systems that are unable to connect directly to one of those national networks. And then touching back onto the Florida Department of Health and, and how we've been able to engage with them more on improving public health, um, it's really blossomed this year through a lot of increased connectivity of the county health departments to both ENS, um, as well as Department of Health's work to adopt statewide query exchange capabilities via the eHealth Exchange. Uh, we've been able to expand care coordination for some of the state's most vulnerable populations from supporting syndromic surveillance efforts to working with specialized registries. And now we're um, even moving forward with working to connect emergency medical services to ENS. Our collaborations with Florida Health continue to utilize HIE to the benefit of patients and uh, Florida HIE participants while at the same time supporting their public health initiatives. The Florida HIE is also supporting um, the agency and Florida Department of Health emergency preparedness and response efforts. And we're, we're doing this primarily through two services. One is the emergency patient lookup service. Uh, this is what we're calling E+. Uh, this is essentially just an easy to use web portal that facilitates HIE during declared emergencies. Pulse COVID is currently deployed in Florida and that's uh, on standby should the need arise while we deploy and the, the more expensive, uh, extensive E plus service. Um, as well as uh, the second, the second uh, project we are where they're going here is a pared down form of the ENS emergency census. Uh, now this was deployed back, I believe uh, during several hurricanes ago and uh, the emergency census now has been enhanced and has increased functionality that now uses the existing ENS platform to provide a temporary statewide and searchable census for use during declared emergencies. In addition to these focus areas, we're also working on expanding services and working to meet the needs of participants and patients in the evolving healthcare landscape. I believe Evan Carter will cover a little bit more of our progress in more detail during his remarks. This pandemic has been a challenge for our state, for our country and the world. However, I believe these challenges have fueled our commitment to increase health information exchange in Florida and also to maintain our trajectory of progress. Together, the participants of Florida HA services are improving care coordination and achieving greater interoperability. Although this third annual summit is in a slightly different format than what we're used to, uh, I do look forward to gaining more insight from you all. I'm also hopeful that you'll find opportunities to engage with current and future HA participants, share your wins, share your experiences with us and learn more about best practice utilization of the Florida HA services to ultimately help us foster better patient care for Floridians. Now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Evan Carter, who will share a little bit more about their extraordinary efforts that the Florida HIE is going this year. Evan. All right, good morning. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, Jamie, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Up? Okay, great. Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having us. Thank you for, for joining. Um, first and foremost, I, I miss seeing all of you in person dearly. I, uh, I miss having an excuse to uh, go to Florida in December. Um, so, you know, but this is definitely the next best thing. So I'm, I'm glad we were all able to uh, get together here this morning. Um, as, as Jamie mentioned, uh, you know, the Florida HIE is about to turn 10 years old, which is, you know, just kind of staggering to me in and of itself. Um, and, and I know we have a lot of people here today that have been with us really every step of the way along those 10 years. And I, I, I can't thank you all enough for your continued support, but it's, it's incredibly exciting to see, um, as, as the first poll indicated, uh, how many new folks we have as well. And, uh, you know, I, I welcome you all to the, the family with open arms. And I think, you know, those who've been around long enough know that that's not an inaccurate description of uh, this group um, and, and how we, you know, support each other on this shared endeavor <clears throat> excuse me um as i look back on you know the 10 years that we've been doing this uh you know the one constant the common denominator uh feels to me is is really truly the um, the ambitiousness of our our priorities and our initiatives um and that's really been the case um from day one i i, I look back i think about you know just kind of retrospectively um you know first establishing adt interfaces to you know 220 over 220 hospitals throughout the state uh in in less than six months back in 2013 2014 um and you know thinking at the time that was about gonna be that had to be the hardest thing we'd ever we'd ever do um that was that was, that was cute it was, a, it was a simpler time um but you know going from that to uh figuring out a way to leverage that ens infrastructure to locate 
uh, missing people during hurricanes, uh, which really uh, came to a head back in 2018 when uh, after Hurricane Michael, when we uh, we were able to help locate hundreds of individuals um, by way of our ENS infrastructure um, to, uh, you know, ongoing work that we've done that, uh, you know, kind of perpetual with regards to improving our data, improving our match rates, uh, working with our customers to, you know, really make significant improvements to our to our services, um, to, you know, achieving high trust certification, which was a, a massive lift behind the scenes um, and, and really kind of, uh, embodied our, our commitment to security and privacy as well. Um, and that, that really leads us into this past year. Um, 2020 has obviously, uh, you know, been, been crazy and, and trying times for all of us. Um, and so I think this year more than ever, um, it's, you know, we all move so fast and often don't get a chance to acknowledge the accomplishments, um, achieved by our shared community uh so i really appreciate this summit as 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 a, as an opportunity to reflect um on what we've been able to achieve and and most importantly thank those that have uh, have made that progress possible um you know so when you, when i think of the the highlights of this year right i, I mean you know hard to hard to call COVID in anything close to a highlight but you know we were i i i really proud of the way we were able to tailor the encounter notification service to facilitate rapid response um, in the face of the epidemic. Um, ACA, DOH, uh, health plan partners as well as um, were really key in stepping to the plate in, in the middle of such a frenetic situation um, and learning new workflows associated with our services to improve care coordination uh, for potential COVID positive patients. Um, as was mentioned, you know, we we also connected. We're, we're uh, we really built out our uh, post-acute data source uh, uh, collection, so to speak, uh, connecting to over 170 post-acute data sources. I, I know uh, about this time last year, I think that number was like 20, um, and this time, you know, we've been we had been working on that uh, effort for at least two years prior um, as as a really strong priority so to be sitting at, at at over 170 there you know there's a lot more in florida uh, but we've we've broken inertia we have momentum there uh it's it's very exciting and you know i definitely want to thank uh particularly our accountable care organization partners um for um tremendous work and persistence and collaboration in in bringing a lot of their post-acute partners to the table and for those post-acute facilities for being so open to collaboration um, and, and so willing to contribute to, you know, our greater goals, um, you know, with, with, without thinking twice in a lot of, in a lot of cases. Um, uh, you know, another exciting thing we've done uh, this, this year is really enhanced bi-directional connectivity with, with entities within the Department of Health. Um, specifically uh, connectivity with all the state's county health departments, as well as all of the county EMS agencies throughout the state. Um, I know the Department of Health uh, did a tremendous, tremendous amount of work and it just, uh, just an incredible level of persistence that they displayed to, uh, you know, push these initiatives across the finish line. Um, you know, having that visibility into county health departments and having that visibility into, um, you know, EMS treat and release rides, things of that nature, you know, will absolutely lead to better outcomes and care coordinations for new populations of, of Floridians um, and new encounter types as well. Um, and hopefully it's, it's also, you know, uh, a net benefit for our other, uh, you know, participants, data sources in particular, and, you know, in terms of time saving on chart polls and things of that nature. So we really think um, the work that we've been able to do with the Department of Health will, will, uh, uh, yield a lot of benefits for a lot of folks in, in a lot of ways. Um, and, you know, those are some of the the flashier things, I guess you could say, that we, we did this year, but there's always kind of that dichotomy of of the high profile, highly visible initiatives that we're undertaking and some, some, some less flashy things behind the scenes that are, um, you know, more so what I would consider you know, focusing on the basics, so to speak, um, but it is incredibly important and and something that, you know, things that we should never lose sight of either. Um, and we, we made a lot of good strides behind the scenes on some things that uh, you may not have been aware of, um, but, you know, hopefully you're seeing benefits of on a daily basis. And th those things are like, uh, you know, automated panel loading capabilities um, to uh, enables, you know, enable us to 
greatly increase the frequency and efficiency with which we load new ENS panels from our subscribers. Um, that then in turn, allow, of course, allows those subscribers to track new patients in a timelier fashion. So we can uh, we can move a lot faster than once per month if, if uh, subscribers are able to uh, move with us at, at that speed. Um, and that, of course, has, has freed up our team to focus on, um, you know, more more tailored customer service and, and support in other areas as well. Um, we have, you know, certainly not stopped to uh, enhance data quality of our, you know, just basic core ENS notifications and templates. Uh, you, you'll, you know, many of you will note um, that we've began rolling out observation status in labeling into our notifications. Um, and we uh, earlier this year went uh, went live with the inclusion of multiple diagnoses uh, beyond simply the primary diagnosis into our notifications. And so those, you know, those, those are the types of things that can kind of get lost in the wash, but um, are very, very impactful to, to the folks that are using these tools. Um, you know, we also, last but not least, migrated our infrastructure to Amazon Web Services, uh, which again, you know, not, not a trivial task, as I'm sure a lot of you are finding out within your own um, environments and organizations. Uh, but that, you know, Th that again demonstrates a commitment to security um, and, and provided, uh, you know, some some greatly appreciated uh, enhancements in terms of performance and scalability, um, which is, you know, very much uh, needed and beneficial as, again, as, as Jamie mentioned, we've, we've grown to a, a notification service that features over 400 sources and is covering over 15 million lives throughout the state. Um, as as I think you you know you're you're piecing together and and you know full well if you've you've been doing this for a while you know the 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 across all of those initiatives um, there's there's a lot of teamwork involved right there I, I, I hopefully I just I just listed off a lot of a lot of folks a lot of a lot of uh, segments of the HIE community stakeholders that have been uh, key in. Uh, achieving all of our initiatives. Nothing is ever done uh, just by the Florida HIE team. Um, so, uh, you know, that is paramount. Uh, we and, and as we are really, frankly, it's crazy to say, but I, I think on the brink of by far um, our biggest and most ambitious year yet, um, that that is going to have to remain the case, right? We're going to need everybody pulling in the same direction and, and need everybody um, contributing and on the same page in order to achieve what we want to uh, into 2021. And I say that having no doubt that 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 will happen, right? Again, we've been doing this for 10 years. We've we we all uh, we're all in the same boat, and and everybody knows that. And I think that's that's precisely why we've been as successful as we have, and why I'm I'm very optimistic looking going into 2021. And and you know when I. When I say that, some of the things that are top of mind that will be, you know, at the top of our priority list are um, uh, compliance with uh, the CMS condition of participation, condition of participation around uh, e-notification requirements. Um, ENS is is a compliance solution. We want to make sure that everybody knows that. We want to take that. Uh, you know, that burden off the plate of the, you know, our hospital uh, and health system data source partners who have been so so good to us and, and so collaborative throughout the years. We think we've got a a a a, a responsibility, a duty to uh, to provide, you know, leverage ENS to um, fulfill that requirement for everybody that we possibly can. Um, so we are compliant. There is there is more work to be done there this year coming in, coming into 2021. And you know we will if we if you're you know if you're a hospital you may have heard from us already and if not you will soon with regards to making some minor tweaks to your data sources to your data feeds um, your uh, <clears throat> your ADT feeds to you know ensure full compliance with with the spec that is needed to. Um, adhere to this new requirement. Uh, we're building in patient asserted notification capabilities. If you're familiar with the requirement, that's that's a, a, a key component of it that we're adding into our solutions. Um, and we're also building attestation tools such such that if a if a hospital connected to the Florida HIE needs to demonstrate compliance to CMS, we have the reporting capabilities in place to uh, provide that uh, that aspect of the solution as well. Um, in addition to that, uh, we really want to, um, in the coming year, make sure we are fully and completely aligned with ACA's uh, Medicaid quality initiatives. There's there's a, a tremendous amount of overlap in, in what 
uh, we are looking to do between the the HIE and, and Medicaid quality, and um, we want to make sure that uh, you know we're not wasting any opportunity to support each other, and and augment um, you know our work towards you know our almost identically shared aims. Really, um, and a lot of that's going to be. Um, a more robust deployment of our smart alerts, working with our, our health plans, our MCO partners, um, to take full advantage of of what I, you know, what we refer to as smart alerts, which is simply a a, a way to more narrowly constrain our ENS notifications um, to to allow a more pinpointed focus on a very specific scenario or set of scenarios for for rapid response. And and what I mean by that is is you know we can focus on specific conditions, um, specific regions, you know. Um, relative to a Medicaid region, relative to a, a DRG group, relative to, uh, you know, things things of that nature, right? And and so the, the possibilities are really endless there, and we want to make sure um, we can uh, tailor our tools to really fit like puzzle pieces into um, Medicaid quality, PPE initiatives, things of that nature. So, uh, it, and it's it's really, uh, it should be a light lift uh, that we're, we're looking forward to engaging health plans with as well. Um, one thing that both of those those top two initiatives, one thing that they both have in common, uh, COP compliance and uh, Medicaid quality initiatives, is a a drastic increase in our engagement with the uh, with the provider community throughout the state. Um, you know, we have uh, you know great saturation with regard you know in the in the health plan ACO health system space, um, but there is you know we're we're really just scratching the surface with regards to practices. Uh, throughout the state, we have a, we have a lot engaged now, but we want to, we want to ramp that up uh, exponentially. Um, so that will be uh, you know increasing our reach out to the provider community to really and truly uh, facilitate seamless transitions of care the way we all want it to work. Uh, is again that's going to take uh, work from all of us, right? Uh, from the agency to health plans to hospitals to ACOs, all of us to get out there and really push this. Uh, this service in the in the provider community, um, but we've done a lot of work thus far this year to grease the skids to make that a very doable um, and achievable endeavor. Uh, but but that's something again that you know when you talk about everybody pulling in the same direction, that's one where um, that that is uh, of paramount importance. Um, as was also mentioned, we want to uh, we want to deploy. Uh, E plus and uh, enhanced emergency census tools to significantly increase our emergency response capabilities. And I especially want to thank the agency, uh, ACA, for for having the you know in, in again such a chaotic year for having the vision um, to to see the need for these tools and to put put in the, the the work ahead of time and be the driving force to enable the Florida HIE to to really be at the forefront nationally of HIE empowered emergency response um, and really position ourselves to uh, support the state um, heading into you know hurricane season 2021 um, in an un, unparalleled capacity um, so that is, it's just been uh, you know an incredible display by the agency and commitment in that space um, that we've seen recently um, we want to continue to climb towards full statewide uh, post-acute connectivity uh, absolutely, like I said, we're we're at 170. Uh, that does not stop. We we have the wind at our back, and and we can't let up there. Um, and we're getting better, and we're at, at engagement. We're getting better at connectivity. We're getting better at the business cases and the value propositions. So we need to just keep plowing forward um, with with that. Um, and we want to add urgent care, right? That's that's the next that's the next big thing. Um, we're having preliminary conversations. Uh, we want to, you know, have, be be speaking about urgent care next year the way I'm speaking about SNFs this year, um, with a with a full wind at our back again. Um, we also uh, we're excited to effectively um, do for clinical data what ENS has done for encounter data by way of our Archer solution. Um, we will. We are uh, piloting Archer. It's something that uh, some of you may have heard me speak of previously, but it's a it's an automated means by which we can route clinical data alongside encounter data uh, to really sit and you know sit next to ENS and and give a, a broader, richer picture of encounters. Um, and we're we're piloting that now. It is a real thing that we want to uh, get out to general availability next year, and and so we're tremendously excited about that. Um, and the last thing I just want to touch upon that I'm I'm, I'm personally really excited about is is we're we're very preliminarily exploring the notion of um, pushing subscriber data right so health plan attribution PCP attribution care team information care notes things of that nature 
taking that and pushing it back to our data sources so that they have a richer picture of uh, uh, patient context at the point of care. Um, and that is very much in, in, in a highly exploratory phase, um, but something I'm, I'm really excited and hopeful I can, I can report more progress on uh, right here next year as well. Um, and if any of those things sound especially exciting to you, I think you all hopefully know how to get a hold of me. Um, so please don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out if, if any of that piques your interest. Um, but with that, I, I, I think that's, uh, you know, like I said, these things are, these are, these are big ticket items that are going to require all of us pulling in the same direction next year. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited and optimistic, um, as we head into 2021, um, and hope to, hope to be here talking about the HIE again, 10 more years down the road. So with that, thank you all very much. And I'll, I'll turn it over to the organizers. All right. Wow. Uh, a, lo a lot of really cool stuff going on. And I like the term that you use, ambitious. There is a lot of ambitious goals being set, but even better, there's so many ambitious goals that are being met and tremendous growth and being able to be nimble and flexible and, and respond in such a way for emergencies, I think really just shows the value of the HIE. 